Let us pray. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Father God, we come before you at this moment in time. And Lord, I am asking you to lead out. I'm asking you, Father God, that the words that I, that I speak uh, at this time, someone will hear. It will touch someone's heart because we are living in solemn times, Lord. And, uh, and people need to know exactly what is happening to prepare for the trouble ahead and to prepare to meet their Lord. So bless us now, I pray, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Friends, I want to start by telling you that there is a religion on the rise at the moment. There is a movement on the rise and it is so close. It is so close to the genuine that if it were possible, the very elect would be deceived. If it, the, 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 this rise, this rising um, movement looks so close to a genuine Christian, a genuine uh, uh, um, Christ-like movement that I promise you, it will deceive many. In Matthew chapter 24 and verse, 20 and verse 24 and verse 5, 4 and 5 rather, sorry, Matthew 24 and verse 4 and 5, Jesus says to his disciples when they ask him, tell us, what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the age? Jesus looks at them and he says to them, take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name saying, I am the Christ. In other words, many shall come in my name saying, I am a Christian. I am a Christian and shall deceive, deceive many. And shall deceive many. Friends, this movement is on the rise. Allow me to share my screen. We are told, Sister White tells us in manuscript releases, volume eight, page 346. She says, she says, we are approaching the end of this earth's history. We're approaching the end of this earth's history and Satan is working as never before. He is striving to act as the director, as director of the Christian world. With an intensity that is marvelous, he is working with lying wonders, with lying wonders. Satan is represented as walking about, roaming like a lion, seeking whom he may devour. He, he, he goes into prisons. Satan is seen going into prisons, kissing the feet of, of inmates, kissing the poor and, and needy, touching um, little babies on the head and blessing them and saying, God, ble God bless you. Jesus loves you. Satan is, is hiding, Sister Y says. He desires to embrace the whole world in his confederacy hiding his deformity under a garb of Christianity, under a garb of Christianity. He assumes the attributes of a Christian and claims to be Christ himself and claim even goes as far as claiming to be the vicar of Christ himself. Even claiming to be the vicar of Christ himself. Friends, you know who I'm talking about. I am talking about the Pope of Rome. I am talking about Pope Francis and his allies in uh, uh, the, the, Roman, the Roman church movement in Rome. But I tell you something, Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter, uh, chapter 2 and verse 11, Paul says, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Lest Satan should get a, a, an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant 
of his devices. Friends and family, uh, God has allowed us, God has given us what is known as the spirit of prophecy, the prophetic vision to see exactly what the enemy is doing, the final movements which are which are afoot right now have been written in the Bible and the spirit of prophecy, the great controversy, desire of ages, testimonies to the church. And so we know exactly what Satan is doing. And if you don't believe me, turn your Bibles with me to, um, to 2 Kings chapter 6. Because in 2 Kings chapter 6, we see a situation where the people of God uh, needed to know what the enemy was doing. You see, Satan had um, Satan was working through the Syrian king, the king of Syria, to try to destroy the people of God, to try to, um, to kill the king of Israel, God's people. And so, friends and family, we find that in, in second, um, second Kings chapter 6, the king of Syria set ambushes in certain places, strategic places, to catch the king of of, of, of Israel to catch him off guard and to kill him. And the Bible tells us that Elisha time and time again went to the king of Israel and he said to him, this is what the king of Syria is doing. This is where he has set his traps to try to catch you. And we are told friends and family that the king of Israel goes to where these places are and he sends his spies and he looks and he says, yes, that is right. The man of God is right. Elisha the prophet was right. And so the king of Syria, we find the king of Syria in conference with his ambassadors, with his, with his general, with his, uh, his, his administrators. And he's saying to them, which of you is for the king of Israel? And one of them pipes up uh, saying, look, um, uh, king, none of us is for the king of Israel. But over in Israel, there is a king. And verse 12 tells us, and one of his servants said, None, my Lord, none, my Lord, O king, but Elisha, the prophet that is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. And so the question I want to ask us today, friends and family, is why do we as Seventh-day Adventists think that even though we have been given the gift of prophecy, we can't see, we don't believe that we can see what the enemy is doing. So in other words, God is a liar. God cannot be trusted because God tells us, I've given you the spirit of prophecy. And he's shown us through scripture that he knows what the enemy is doing and that his people should know what the enemy is doing. That his people should know what the enemy is doing. And so friends, Paul tells us, lest, we, lest Satan should gain an advantage of us, for we are not, we are not ignorant of his devices. Turn with me to Psalms chapter 21 and verse 11. Psalms chapter 21 and verse, verse 11. Psalm 21 and verse 11. And we see what the Bible, what the word of God tells us about Satan and his devices. Verse 11. For they intend evil. For they intend evil against thee. Friends and family, Seventh-day Adventists, I want to let you know that Satan, working through the Pope of Rome, working through the, 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 um, the, the, the papacy, is trying to hurt us. They hate us. They intend to do evil to us. They imagine a mischievous device. Here's the word again, device which they are, uh, praise God, which they are unable to perform. They are unable and to perform. And so in the book, Signs of the Times, Sister White tells us, Signs of the Times, dated February, February 22nd, 1910, Sister White says, if the people of God will put their trust in him, Father in heaven, help us to put our trust in you, dear Lord, please, in the mighty name of Jesus. If the people of God, if the people of God will put their trust in him and by faith rely upon his power, the devices of Satan will be defeated. 
the devices of Satan will be defeated in our time as signally as they were defeated in the days of Mordecai. Signs of the times dated February 22nd, 1910. And so friends and family, Satan desires to sift us as wheat. Maybe we don't understand what's going on here. Satan desires to sift you and I as wheat. Look at what the word of God tells us in Luke chapter, Luke chapter 23, 22 rather, verse 31 and 32. Luke chapter 20, 22 and verse 20, uh, 31 and 32. The word of God says, the word of God says, Jesus speaking to Peter, he says to him, um, Simon, Simon, in other words, church, Seventh-day Adventist, Seventh-day Adventist, Seventh-day Adventist, the church of God, Satan hath desired you that he may sift you as wheat. Satan has desired you that he may sift you as wheat. Praise God for the next, for verse 32. But I have prayed for you. But I have prayed for Seventh-day Adventists. I have prayed for the commandment keeping people of God. I have prayed for those who have, who have taken hold of present truth. I have prayed for those who have, who have followed me into the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary where Christ sits and makes intercession on our behalf. On our behalf. Friends, I want to transition into um, some of the the current events that are, that are taking place right now. A week ago in my sermon, uh, uh, the sat the sat Saturday, um, or last Saturday, Sabbath, rather, I told you about an event that was taking place. And it was the, the culmination, the week of Laudato Si, Laudato Si week, as they call it. And Laudato Si week, we found that Laudato Si week there, they were they were bringing a plan before the world, and I want to share this plan. I want to share the plan that they decided to bring to the world to everyone. Um, this uh, right, right now, here it is. Here we are. Let's go there. So here is the plan that I want you to look at. The heading of the plan. This was this was dated May seventeenth. 2021. This is a, a transcript from an interview between the author, his name is Iris San Martin, writing the article, and a priest by the name of Priest Zampini. Priest Zampini. Priest Zampini, we found out last week, was a, is a man who is who 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 bats, who, who works with global leaders. He works with the, the, um, the, what, what do you call it again? The um, Econ World Economic Forum, while at the same time, he also works with those at grassroots level. And you can look at my sermon um, enti entitled, uh, entitled Sleeping While the World is in Crisis. Look at that sermon and it will, it will give you a, head, a heads up. On, um, on this document. But I, I've taken an extract from the document and I want you to see what I've, what I've found, what I've found from that document. Here's what it said. It says, Vatican rolls out spectacular plan for Laudato to see. Goes on to say, Zampini is speaking now. He says, it is very important to be able to tell the world that we, we, who are we? The Catholic church are launching an ambitious action that responds to Pope Francis's request to dream big. I want you to follow me in red writing now. In red writing, it says, Pope Francis told us, Pope Francis told us that we, um, that our role was to change the current economy. Pope Francis told us that it's our role to change the current economy and to change structures, to change structures. <laughs> Friends, when you read the book, Great Controversy, page 101, rather, no, no, wrong, 
page 235, Sister White tells us in that book, Great Controversy, that the Jesuit, which Pope Francis is a Jesuit, the role of the Jesuit is to shape the policies of nations. They climb up into, author, into places of, of authority. In other words, their whole role is to bring the world back under popery. And Pope Francis is telling the, 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 his, his workers, his allies, his um, priests, they are to shape, change the economy. And so if the economy is changed, those who, who want to buy or sell, but do not buy into their plan, won't be able to buy or sell, friends. That's where we're, that's where we're headed. He goes on to say, he did not want little things. So we went spectacular. As part, second paragraph, as part of the action plan, the dicastery will unveil the Laudato Si action plan, May 25th. I have underlined that because I will come back to what was done after May 25th, after May 25th, ahead of its full launch in October. So the platform has now been launched. Laudato Si platform has now been launched. Let me just make it clear. The platform for Laudato Si has now been launched and it will be fully rolled out in October, just in time for COP26 in November, November 1st to 12 in Glasgow. Listen to this, the platform is meant to help those who want to increase their commitment to bring in Laudato Si to life. But what about those who don't want to bring Laudato Si to life? And the very fact that they're saying, bringing Laudato Si to life, it sounds to me like Revelation chapter, chapter 13 and verse 15 and 16. Let's go there. Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 and, six, 15 and 16 says, And he had power to give life, give life unto the image of the beast. The image of the beast. He had power to give life unto Laudata Sea, the principles of Laudata Sea. And it says, uh, image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. So friends, no one is exempt. Regardless of who you are or who you're standing in the world, you will either have to buy into Laudata Sea Laudat or you will be cast out because the, the platform is there to help those who want to increase their commitment to bringing Laudato Si to life. And so in other words, if you don't want to bring Laudato Si to life, you might find yourself, you will, you will, not might, you will find yourself being outcast by promising a set of actions over a period of 70 years. Let's move on. And so, the, the program took place. And now here we find Cardinal Turkson speaking. I think this, 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 this was on the 26th. He was speaking. He said, the, di the dicastery, he explained, is proposing seven loud that you see goals. So here are the goals. The first goal, the response of the cry of the earth. The response to the cry of the earth. That's number one. So in other words, the earth is crying out. The earth is in peril. It's crying out. Mother Earth, so-called, is crying out. And so they have to respond to the, the cry of the earth. Second one, the response to the cry of the poor. There's poor people out there, and they, they're responding to the cry of the poor, so-called. Third one, ecological economics. If you don't know, if, for anyone who doesn't know what ecology means, ecology speaks about how the, the, the humans relate to nature, ecology plants, wildlife, and um, the, 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 the environment around us. Ecological economics. Economics deals with money. And so when you put the two together, what do you get? You're getting a situation where though where, where, where the, eco the, the, the ecology, the nature, determines monetary mon um, um, finances. Whew, this is powerful, friends. The, th the fourth one, adopting a simple lifestyle. 
adapting a simple lifestyle. I've got a video to show you after this. The fifth one, ecological education. In other words, training, retraining people on education, Educa re-educating um, young people, universities, and all places of learning, ecological education. This next one, if the number six, ecological spirituality. This is where the crux of the matter is. Ecological spirituality. In other words, friends and family, let me not even go beat around the bush. Nature worship. Because when you speak about spirituality, we're speaking about, about um, spirit, about worship. But the Bible tells us God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And so if we're talking about nature and spirituality, mixing together, you're talking about nature worship. And that's the whole idea of love that to see. And the final one, com community involvement and participatory action. We go on to say the journey. So this is a journey you're going to take us on. The journey of the Laudatasi action plan will take place over seven years. Finally, finally, seven day Adventists for years have been speaking about a Sunday law is coming. A Sunday law is coming. A Sunday law is coming. And here we finally have a timeline being given to us. They're saying it will happen over seven years. They want to implement the, the um. Uh, um, um, these principles, with the first year dedicated to three fundamental tasks. First one, community building, or should that be community rebuilding, or the great reset. Mm. Now, number two, resource sharing, country sharing resources. What kind of resources? Vaccinations, possibly. Yeah. Um, information on your data. You can go, uh, if you want to travel to France, France knows all your background details. Hmm, I wonder. Um, everybody buying into a certain way of thinking? Hmm, I don't know. Let's wait and see. And number, and number three, they are planning to draw in, in the first year to draw up a concrete plan of action. A concrete plan of action for the realization of these goals. And so if it is concrete, my Bible tells me anything that is concrete is set in stone, set in stone. And when they set it in stone, there is no turning back. There is no turning back. These people have a plan to implement these seven, these seven goals in the next seven years, in, 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 over a period of seven years. And these seven years will start, will, co will run coincide, co um, coincide with the decade of action by the United Nations uh, uh, sustainable development goals. And if you want to know how, what those goals are, go back to my previous sermon, sleeping while the world is in crisis. And you will see how I, I, I explain that. And the final sentence says, the seventh year, the seventh year will be a sabbatical. A sabbatical? Why would you need a sabbatical? A sabbatical means a time off, a time to rest after you have labored. So in other words, they're going to be laboring for six years and resting in the seventh year. I wonder how much work they plan to do. I wonder who will, um, what, what type of work they are planning to do over those seven years and who will be involved. And what if you don't want to be a part of that work that they're trying to do? Where will you fall? in this plan? Where will you come? Where will you stand in this plan? The final year, the sabbatical year. Here is a video I want to show you. The video, here we have it. Welcome to 2030, Simple Living. 2030, welcome to my city, or should I say, our city. I don't own anything. I don't own a car. I don't own a house. I don't own any appliances or any clothes. It might seem odd to you, but it makes perfect sense for us in this city. Everything you considered a product, has now become a service. We have access to transportation, accommodation, food and all the things we need in our daily lives. One by one all these things became free, so it ended up not making sense for us to own much. 
first communication became digitized and free to everyone. Then, when clean energy became free, things started to move quickly. Transportation dropped dramatically in price. It made no sense for us to own cars anymore, because we could call a driverless vehicle or a flying car for longer journeys within minutes. We started transporting ourselves in a much more organized and coordinated way when public transport became easier, quicker and more convenient than the car. Now I can hardly believe that we accepted congestion and traffic jams, not to mention the air pollution from combustion engines. What were we thinking? Sometimes I use my bike when I go to see some of my friends. I enjoy the exercise and the ride. It kind of gets the soul to come along on the journey. Funny how some things seem never seem to lose their excitement, walking, biking, cooking, drawing and growing plants. It makes perfect sense and reminds us of how our culture emerged out of a close relationship with nature. Mm, mm. In I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold it there. I'm going to hold it there. That last sentence, it makes perfect sense to see how our culture emerged out of a close relationship with nature. Friends, nature worship, this new religion that is on the rise. Let me carry on sharing my screen. Our city did. My living. finish this and then move on want the algorithm to do it for me okay welcome to the year i stop sharing then i'll go back and share another way Something here. Okay. All right. Um, Twenty thirty. Welcome to my city. Or entire the entire video. Let the video run out. Have then... plenty of green space and plants and trees all over. I still do not understand why in the past we filled all free spots in the city with concrete. Shopping. I can't really remember what that is. For most of us, it has been turned into choosing things to use. Sometimes I find this fun, and sometimes I just want the algorithm to do it for me. How do I move on? I want to move on with my start with my with my thing. Stop sharing. I'll stop sharing for a moment. Yes, friends. So we can see what, they what the plan is. The plan is to get, uh, 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 get the world into a situation where, where, where we, nature, nature worship becomes the, 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 the order of what of life. And so we, here we are, here we are, here we are. And so here's what Cardinal Church said, back on track now. Very sorry about that. I had to, to work out how to, to get rid of that, um, that video. So here we have it. So Cardinal Church says, it says, launch his Laudate C action plan. And here's what Cardinal Church said. He says, now, is the time to act. Now is the time to act. Come, Cardinal Turks introduces the action oriented project on Tuesday morning, which was Tuesday, the 25th of May, Tuesday, at a Tuesday morning press conference for the conclusion of Laudato C year. Let's skip on down to Red Writing. Red Writing he says, the, world, um, the worldwide reception of the proposal. Friends, the whole world has accepted has, has accepted louder to see. The whole world has accepted the fact that um that 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 we they need to preserve nature under the guise. They have they have accepted this plan, this plan of nature worship under the guise 
of protecting the environment. And the final, part, final sentence at the bottom, he says, however, now more than ever, it is time to act and to do something concrete, to do something concrete. Here's what they've said. 2009, 2019, September, dated September. Here's what Pope Francis said about integral ecology. Integral ecology. Where did I get a word from? Integral ecology. Here's what he says. With, the, with, the, with this dire warning, the prefect of the dicastery for the promoting of integral development set the stage for a bold initiative from, um, from the Vatican, Laudato Si Action Plan. Friends, look at this. I want you to look at the date, 2019, September 2019. Was there a coronavirus happening in the, 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 um, the world in September 2019? The answer to that is no. Coronavirus did not present itself until December in Wuhan, in December. But they already had the action plan ready. That's interesting, isn't it? The action plan was already being put together. He says it right there, September 2019. The Laudatisi action plan, a seven year journey towards integral ecology. I told you at the start of my sermon, there is a new religion on the rise. The new religion is integral ecology. Integral ecology. Let's look at what integral ecology actually is. And Pope Francis tells us in, um, in 2019 what it is. He says, integral ecology requires a culture of spiritual conversion. Spiritual conversion. I am sure that the, my Bible does not say I need to be converted to an ecological way of thinking. My Bible says repent in Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. The Bible says repent and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And so if they are saying integral ecology is spiritual conversion, well, I am sorry. I am not sorry because my Bible does not say that. And as Seventh-day Adventists, we cannot buy into this, friends and family. As commandment-keeping people of God, we cannot buy into a situation. We cannot buy into a, 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 a spirituality that asks us to convert, um, to convert the ecology. Who has ever heard of um, ecological sins? Ecological sins. They've come out with a thing called ecological sins. Pope Francis have pointed the world to ecological sins, which are sins against nature. Sins against nature. Let's carry on. Let's carry on. It goes on to say, it underpins how, 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 how relationships should be based on an attitude of caring for one's common home. Common home, the earth, mother earth, they call it. Common good, brother, um, one's brother, one's sister, and one's relationship with God. So God comes at the end, eh? God comes at the end. Let's move on from there. So friends and family, the whole point of the, of the, the encyclical law that you see is about Sunday rest by law. It's about implementing Sunday rest. Sun worship, nature worship. Friends, we cannot, as Seventh-day Adventists, buy into this because it is against what we believe. The Bible says, the first commandment, thou shall have no other gods before me. Thou shall not bow down thyself to them, nor worship them. For I am, I am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the Father and the children and the third and the fourth generation. It says, thou shalt not make any graven image of any likeness of anything that is in the heavens above that it is in the earth beneath, that it is in the waters under the earth. Now, even so they're worshiping sun worship, friends. We cannot buy into this. We cannot sit at the same table as them. We should not be in any agreement with them. 
front worship, they are the same ones who are going to turn around and stab us in the back. And if we think that we're going to get away by sitting around with, with, with them, we've got, we're wrong. Absolutely wrong. The whole world will be, will be called to worship the beast. And it's either we start worshiping God now and say, this is where I stand and I will not move. As for me and my house, Joshua said, I, I will serve the Lord. I will serve the Lord. And here's what Pope Francis says. Article 237 of Laudato Si. He says, Sunday, our, on Sunday, our participation in the Eucharist has special importance. He says, Sunday like the Jewish Sabbath. So he's making a distinction and he's, and he's using the Jewish Sabbath, which he knows is the true Sabbath as a way of, cast, of, of casting aside to say Christians worship on Sunday. So, um, Saturday is only for the Jews. Lies of friends and family. Spinning of lies. He says, um, Sunday like the Jewish Sabbath is meant to be a day which heals our relationship with God. Which part? My Bible tells me that the Sabbath is the day that he's our relationship with God. We are ourselves and with others and with the world. No, no, no. no. The only day that God blessed and sanctified is the seventh day Sabbath. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 3 and verse 2 and 3. Let me go there. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 2 and 3. The word of God says, and and on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he, had, um, which he had made, and rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he had rested. In Ezekiel chapter 20 and verse 12, therefore, wherefore, I gave them my Sabbaths, that it may be a sign between me and them that I am the Lord that doth sanctify them, that doth sanctify them. And so Pope Francis is spinning a web of lies, a web of lies, and the whole world has accepted this child of the papacy. Here's what he says, Sunday, that the Jewish Sabbath is meant to heal our relationship with God. You know what, let me get off of my screen, move on. Friends, in Laudato Si, he wrote Integral Ecology, Integral ecology, this new religion, is what he says. To um, this too, integral ecology affects how we treat the environment. And integral ecology includes taking time to recover a, um, a sea, a, a serene harmony with creation. Friends, that sounds like nature worship to me. That sounds like meditation in the nature, grove worship, which God condemns reflecting on our lifestyle and our ideals and contemplating the, crea the creator who lives among us and surrounds us, whose presence must, be, uh, must not be contrived, but found uncovered. So in other words, he's saying Sunday, integral ecology is spending time with God. Friends, that is why it is so important for us to study the word of God and to study the spirit of prophecy because the deception will be so close to the truth. It looks so nice that we should be looking after the environment, but where is it leading to? It is leading to nature worship. Friends, this is the word tells us Bible commentary, page, um, um, volume seven, page 976. History will be repeated. False religion will be exalted. The first day of the week, Sunday, a, a common working day, possessing no sanctity whatsoever, whatever, will be set up as was the image in Babylon. All nation and tongue and people will be commanded to worship this spurious Sabbath. Before I was speaking to a friend of mine um, some time ago, and he said to me, uh, my brother, before Daniel chapter 3, when these men had to stand, um, had, to, had to make a decision whether they will stand or bow before the beast, Daniel chapter 1 took place where they stood for what is right. 
Daniel chapter one, they stood for what was right. And in Daniel chapter three, they were able to stand when, when the whole world bowed before the beast, before the image. All nations and tongue and people will be commanded to worship the spirit Sabbath. The decree enforcing the worship of this day is, um, is to go forth all the world. Friends, all over the world, countries are making provisions to enforce Sunday. Countries are saying, listen, we've got to make Sunday, we've got to, to, um, to stop buying on Sundays. In the Caribbean, countries are saying, we don't buy, we don't, shops are not, no longer going to be open on Sundays. In Europe, it's already been implemented. Friends, we're here. We're here. We're here. Let me stop sharing. Let's go back. Let's go back to my sermon. Let's go back to my sermon. I want us to read from the book of, um, of, of, of Jonah. Jonah chapter one. And I want to read from verse six through to verse four, um, 16. Jonah chapter one, reading from verse six to verse 16. Daniel, Amos, Daniel, Hosea, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah. Chapter one, reading from verse six. And here's what happened, friends and family. And so the Bible tells us that Jonah goes down into um, to Joppa. And from Joppa, Jonah decides that he's going down to, um, to, to Tarshish. And he goes down into the ship. And now Jonah is in the side of the ship, sleeping. And, and God sends a great storm. And the Bible tells us that the shipmaster came. So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What meanest this, O sleeper? The man of God was sleeping while men were, were, while men were crying out to their gods, while men were worshiping and saying, please help us. And they were picking up a piece of stone and they were saying, save me, save me, save me. The man of God was asleep, friends and family. Asleep. And the heathen, the heathen shipmaster comes to the man of God and says, why are you sleeping? You're a sleeper. It's not the time to be sleeping. It's time to wake up. We're in crisis. We're in crisis. Arise, he said, call upon thy God. If so, that God my, um, will think upon us that we perish not. And they said, um, and they said everyone to his fellow, come, let us cast lots that we may know for whose cause this evil is come upon us. So they cast lots and the lot fell upon Jonah. The lot fell upon Jonah, upon Jonah. Then said they to him, tell us, we pray thee, who, for whose cause this evil is come upon us? What is thine occupation? And whence comest thou? What is thy country? And what people art thou? Many questions were being asked to Jonah at this time. And he said unto them, I am a Hebrew. I fear the God. I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which hath made the sea and the dry land. Then were they exceeding afraid, exceedingly afraid, and said, why hast thou done this? Why hast thou done this? For, he, for the men knew that he had fled from the Lord. Why? For he told them. The men knew that he fled from the Lord for he had told them, he had told them. And the Bible goes on to say, then they said unto him, what shall we do unto thee that the sea may be calm unto us? For, for the sea was wrought and was tempestuous. Tempestuous. Friends and family, the, 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 the winds and the waves were stirring up. Luke chapter 21. The, the men's hearts were fear, feeling them for fear. They saw things that they had never seen before. These shipmen, they were, they were in dire straits. They were about to die. About to die. And he said unto them, take me up. Take me up and cast me forth into the sea. So shall the sea be calm unto you. For I know that it is for my sake. Seven day Adventist is in the building. And everything is going wrong. And people are saying, what is going on? The Seventh-day Adventist is sleeping. 
when when men and women all around them, colleagues are in are are, 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 are in situations, are, are, are facing problems, are facing issues, financial issues, job loss issues, all that is going on, lose loss of home, children are, are, are sick, coronavirus is hitting family, and the seven-day Adventist is sat right there and refuse to say a word. You want to say this for my sake. So friends, the sins, Sister White tell us in Great Controversy, page 389, the world, the sin of the world's impenitence lie at the door of the church. And so when everything is going on around us, when we see our neighbors uh, 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 um, shouting on the street and arguing and, and cussing and, and doing all kind of madness and crazy things, and when we see people um, completely disregarding um, the sanctity of life, the sanctity of marriage, children um, walking around with knives, we wonder why, why? Because the church, the church did not do its job did not tell the world that there is righteousness, did not show the world what righteousness looks like. The sins of the world's impenitence lies at the door of the church, friends and family. Nevertheless, the men rode, friends, the men rode, these, these heathen men, they said, never, they said even though it's you, we are gonna try and get ourselves out of this. And the men rode, nevertheless, the men rode to bring it to land, but they could not, for the sea was wrath and was tempestuous against them. Wherefore they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee, let not, let not, let us not perish for the life, for, for this man's life, and lay not upon us innocent blood, for thou, O Lord, hast done as it. Please be. God did it. God did it. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from raging. And the men, <laughs> then the men feared God. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows. Friends, those who profess to know God and has been given the mission by God, the mission of God to spread the first, second, and third angel's messages in a special sense. Seventh-day Adventists have been set in the world as watchmen and light bearers. On them is shining wonderful truths from the word of God. They have been given the work of the most solemn importance, the proclamation of the first, second and third angels' messages. They are to allow nothing. There is no other work of so great importance. They are to allow nothing else to absorb their attention. Seventh-day Adventists are asleep while men's hearts are failing them for fear. Failing them for fear. Men and women all around us are clutching, clutching at any straw that they can find, hoping that something will save them. They turn to the bottle. They turn to cannabis. They turn to the needle, pumping the needle in their arm. They turn to, they turn to drugs. They turn to music. They turn to the dance hall. They turn to anything that they think could numb the pain that they're going through. Something to save them. These men on the ship turn into any god hoping that it could save them. While the church of God, while the church of God with the truth that is needed, that is needed at that time, was running away from the presence of the Lord, running away from God, running away from the task that he has given them to spread the gospel. Let's look at what's going on in the story, friends. Let's go back to the story and see what's going on in the story. The Bible tells us that these men were professional mariners. They were mariners. They were professional sailors. They had seen um, storms before. 
but they had never seen a storm of this magnitude. We are told in the book, Last Day's Events, Sister White tells us that men of, um, of learning are looking at the things that are taking place all around us. And they realize that we are on the, the verge of, an, of a stupendous crisis. People are seeing, thinking men and women of all classes are seeing that something is about to happen. These men have seen tornadoes, they have seen storms, they have seen issues, but they have never seen this storm before. They had never seen this storm before. Their suspicions rose at something that this occurrence was not natural. This wasn't natural, it was a supernatural occurrence. Friends and family, climate change in the time of Jonah had reached a new level because if that was happening today, they would call it climate change. They would say climate, there was a, there was a catastrophe. Climate change came to the sea. Came to the sea, friends. They cast lots. Like we said, the lot fell upon Jonah. I was in, I was in, um, morning prayer breakfast this morning and two people were praying and the first person was, was praying and the person was praying about their um, going out into the streets and telling people what was um, I, I'm giving the, the message of, of Christ is coming, the message for the time, present truth to people, to those and people were asking questions. That's the first prayer. And as that person was praying, the Holy Spirit was speaking to him. And the second person started, um, started praying. And the person brought up Jonah. <laughs> and the person brought up Jonah. And by and by and by, the Holy Spirit said, see, connect the dots. Connect the dots. Go back to the text, friends and family. Because the Bible tells us that the men started questioning Jonah. Jonah was being questioned. They were asking, they said to Jonah, who, tell us who you are. Tell us, tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this sin is, is this evil is come upon us? First question. Second question, what is thine occupation? Third question, whence comest thou? Fourth question, what is thy country? Fifth question, what people are thou? Friends and family, when we start, when we start telling people, when we start going out and meeting people, people start asking, tell me who you are. But they won't, take, they won't ask us these questions unless we're in the storm with them. Unless we go to where they are, they will never ask the question. Tell us who you are. Tell us about this God who you serve. God gave us a commission to go and tell the world about him. Hear the answer of, uh, 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 of, um, of Jonah. Friends, friends, the Lord cast and um, fell upon Jonah. But the question I want to ask you is this. When, the lot, when, 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 the, when these calamities begin to get worse and worse and worse, when, 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 we see, when we see images on the news, when we start to see things like ice glaciers falling into the sea, when we see places like India and, it's, and, 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 what, and, and the scene that we saw in India over the last couple of weeks, where people are, being, are dying left, right, and center. People are just being buried. They're not being buried anymore. They're being burned. When we see that start happening worldwide, worldwide, when we start to see the ice poles melting, the North Pole melting, the South Pole melting, when we start to see, to see, to see scenes of fire, con great con conflagration in places like California and Australia, and it's just be getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. Who do you think they're gonna point a finger at? Who do you think they're going to point the finger at friends and family? Is the question I want to ask you this, this afternoon, today. Sister White tells us in calamities, in calamities by sea and by land, 
and in great conflagrations, fires, in fierce tornadoes and horrific hailstones, in tempests and floods and cyclones, tidal waves, and in earthquakes, climate change, friends and family, climate change. She's talking about a climate change issue in every place and in a thousand forms. Satan is exercising his power. He sweeps away the ripening harvest and famine and distress follow. Did not the Bible tell us in Matthew chapter 24 and in he and in in, in is in Luke chapter 21 that there shall be famines and pestilence in the last days? And do we are we seeing famines and pestilence right now? They're talking about a food shortage in the world. Famines, friends. He sweeps away the ripening gain, grain, harvest rather, and famine and distress follow. It, by he imparts to the ear a deadly pain, and thousands perish by the pestilence. Though these visitations are to become more and more frequent and disastrous, they're not going to get any better. Men are going to try to make it to um to 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 solve the problem. What we are told is going to get worse and worse. Destruction will be upon both man and beast. And then the great deceiver will persuade men that those who serve God, here we have it, the lattice cost, and who has it fallen on, fell on? Those who serve God are causing their e these evils. The class that provoked the displeasure of heaven, the heathens worshiping their idols, provoking the displeasure of heaven, will charge all their troubles upon those upon those whose obedience to God's commandment is a perpetual reproof to their transgression, to the transgressor. It will be declared that men are offending God by the violation of the Sunday Sabbath, of the Sunday Sabbath. And so when they implement, when they say, when, when to implement the Sunday Sabbath, they are saying it is because men are violating Sunday. And we see from the current events that I showed you earlier that, that Laudatusi is all about Sunday worship. And so it, it's very easy to bring it in. Now that they have got this platform and the seven years that they want to implement this, then they will say the only thing that can save, the situ save us in a situation that we're in is if we implement Sunday. The only way we can be saved is if we implement Sunday as a law and everyone has to worship God on Sunday. But they're not going to be worshiping God. They're going to be worshiping nature. That this sin, the sin of ecology, it's as though Sister White knew God gave her an insight that they were going to come up, that they were going to change the law of God and say, sin of ecology is now a sin. And she says that this sin, the violation of the Sunday Sabbath, has brought calamities that will not cease until Sunday observance shall be strictly enforced. Notice the words that she used there, shall be strictly enforced. And how do you strictly enforce something? By putting it into law and telling anyone who violates it, you will be fined. You'll be locked in prison. Oh, let's go even further than that. You will be killed. He calls it all, small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand, the mark of the beast, and that no man might be able to buy or sell except he have the mark of the beast or the number of his name. Number of his name. The mark of the beast. Strictly enforced. Friends, we're in a time of judgment. I want to bring out something else that came out that I saw in the text. We're in a time of judgment. And the Lord said to us, we are told to preach the first, second, and third angel's message and the first, first, first angel's message in Revelation chapter 14 and verse 6 tells, it says this, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, 
having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come. We are in the hour of his judgment, friend. The hour of his judgment is come. And worship him that made heaven and earth, the creator, the sea and the fountains of water. What message do you think Jonah was preaching in a time of judgment? Let's go back to Jonah and see. The Lord showed me this. Let's go back to Jonah and see what message Jonah was preaching. Here we have it. So the men knew that Jonah had run away from God. They knew that God was chasing Jonah. They knew that God sent the, 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 the great um, wind, the, wind, the great storm that they were in, the judgment that they were in. And the Bible tells us in verse 9 that when they asked Jonah, who are you? What is your occupation? Where are you from? Who are your people? Jonah said to them, I am a Hebrew. I'm a remnant. I'm a Seventh-day Adventist. Hello, somebody. And I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which, which hath made the earth and the sea and the land. What message was Jonah preaching there? Jonah had just preached the first angel's message. Fear God, I fear God. Fear God, I fear God. Fear God, who is the creator, because we're in a time of judgment, friends. Specific to that moment was a message of fearing God. Friends and family, we have a message to tell the world now before it is too late. We have to tell the world to fear God now before it is too late. Before it is too late. I was talking to someone recently. I was in the park with my daughters and I, they were, they were sliding up and down the side and this gentleman came into the park and he had his daughter with him. And we just started talking. We got to talking and, and, I, and, 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 and I was asking him, how are things going with this coronavirus issue that, we, that we're facing right now? And he looked at me and he was trying to sidestep the issue. But <laughs> listen, we're in the same playground. <laughs> we're not going anywhere for a while. We're gonna talk. And so I pressed him a little bit. I pressed him here, I pressed this button there until in the end he said, listen man, we are in the time of judgment. He said the coronavirus, and I was shocked. I was shocked. I didn't expect this to come out of his mouth. He said, this is God's judgment upon us. He said, this is God's judgment. The world is seeing that the coronavirus is a judgment from God. Friends, we're in a time of judgment. In a time of judgment, a seven day Adventist, we have to wake up and give the loud cry and give the message. Tell people to fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment is come. Soon and very soon, these, the, the, this, we, we, we've been given that seven year, but we have been told that at the end of the seven year, it's during the seven years. During those seven years, that they will implement the Sunday law. We don't know. It could be the first year, it could be the second year, it could be the third year. I don't know. But during those seven years, they will implement a Sunday law. And at that point in time, probation will close. Probation closes for Seven day Adventists and for the world. How shall we stand? In that great day. That song just came to my mind. Thank you, Father. How shall we stand in that great day? How shall we stand that moment of searching when we knew, when we knew that what was going to happen, when we knew we had the Bible and we had the spirit of prophecy and we knew exactly what God said was going to happen, but we sat at home. We sat at home and we zoomed in every Sabbath. But we went to work every day and we, and we couldn't go out and witness to people because we're saying we can't, we, we've got a social distance. How shall we stand that moment of searching, friends? 
in all our sins those books reveal. When from the courts each case decided shall be granted no appeal. Willful neglect to do the work that God has given to us. To do the work that God has given to us. I just want to give God thanks because the preaching of the gospel, the preaching of the gospel by sinful, earing mortals, earing human beings like myself, is only by God's grace. It's only by his grace that I can preach his word. Only by his grace I can stand before you and say, God is good. I could be anywhere in the world right now. I could be six foot under if Satan had had his way in Iraq among friends running around in Bristol, running around in, in, in Belfast, all those places doing craziness. I could have been six foot under. God kept me. He kept me alive by his grace. So preaching the word of God is only by his grace. Friend. What have you gone through? I don't know. God knows. Friends, at the preaching of the word of Jonah, the Bible tells us in verse 16, that the men feared God. Jo um, Jonah chapter one, 2, verse 1, verse 16. The men feared God. They worshiped the living God and they made vows to him. They promised that they will serve him. And I praise God that he's not slack concerning his promises. As you and I count slackness, but is long suffering to us, Lord, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So even after we've gone on our crazy escapades, living our life however we want to live, smoking cannabis, smoking cigarettes, sleeping around, doing all kinds of things, God still says, Come back to me. I love you. I love you. love you. I want to close friends and family. I want to just share one more, one more slide with you. We are told, were it not for the world, were it not that the world is helplessly intoxicated, by the wine of Babylon, multitudes will be convicted and converted by the plain cutting truth of the word of God. But religious faith appears so confused. A religious faith appears so confused and discordant that the people know not what to believe is truth. They see Seventh-day Adventists dressing however they please. They see seven Adventists wearing the earrings, wearing the earrings. Men and women dressing in any way they want to. Walking around, uh, uh, you wouldn't even believe, friends and family, dressing our conversation, the way we speak, the words that come out of our mouth, the things we even talk about on the Sabbath day. We're covering right now in our Sabbath school lesson, the Sabbath, the Sabbath and what we should be doing on the Sabbath. Because Deuteronomy chapter, um, chapter 12, verse 5, God says, keep the Sabbath to sanctify it. In other words, keep the Sabbath in a way that sanctifies it. So our conduct, our actions, our words on the Sabbath day should show that we keep the Sabbath holy, that the whole day is holy. In Isaiah chapter 58, verse 13, Isaiah 58, verse 13, the Lord said to us, if you remove your foot from the Sabbath. If you remove your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your own pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath of the life, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him, not doing thine own way, or find thine own pleasure, and speaking thine own word. Friends, the world is looking on at Seventh-day Adventists, and they're seeing a people who supposedly are following God supposedly are keeping the commandments, but in our lifestyle, we're living like the world. We're living worse than the world, and the world is confused. And the world is confused. She goes on to say, but religious faith appears so confused and discordant. Jonah running away from God. This was the issue. 
the men were so confused. They were like, why have you done this? Why would you run away from the creator of heaven and earth? Why would you run away from the creator of heaven and earth and bring this evil at our door? Bring this evil upon us. The sins of the world's impenitence lies at the door of the church folks. The sins of the world's impenitence lies at the door of the church. Every soul, friends and family, you and I, all of us, every soul that has made a profession of Christ has pledged himself to be all that he can be, to be all that he can be, he can possibly be, um, um, uh, uh, sorry, 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 be all that he can be for him in this spiritual war. To be active, to be zealous, to be efficient in his master's service. We ought to be active, efficient in our master's service. Christ expects every man to do his duty. Let this be the watchword throughout the ranks of his followers. Let this be your watchword. Let this be my watchword, friends and family. You know why? Because soon and very soon, soon and very soon, the religion of Christ will be held in contempt. If you say, I keep the Sabbath, men will say, what? And they will try to kill us. They will want to kill us. Here's what Sister White tells us, my last quotation, and I'm done. I'm done after this. Testimonies to the Church, Volume 5, page 136. I want to close with this one. It says, when the religion of Christ is most held in contempt, when his law, the Ten Commandments law, the Sabbath law, the Sabbath, because they're trying to implement Sunday, when his law is most despised, then should our zeal be the warmest, our courage and firmness be the most flint unflinching, to stand in defense of truth and righteousness when the majority forsakes us. This, uh, to, to, to stand in defense of truth and righteousness when the majority forsake us, to fight the battles of the Lord when champions are few, this will be our test. At this time, we must gather warmth from the coldness of others. Courage from their cowardice and loyalty from their treason. At this time, friends and family, we gather, we gather warmth from the coldness of others. They're acting cold. They, their faith have gone cold, but I'm going to love Jesus nonetheless. I'm going to stand right here on Christ Jesus nonetheless. I shall not be moved, friends and family, should be the motto of every Christian. So why it tells us in Great Controversy, page 45, page 45, I'm closing, sorry. I'm closing, I'm closing. I just want to read this to you. It says, if unity, if unity could be secured only by the compromise of truth and righteousness, then let there be difference and even war. If unity can only be made through compromise of righteousness, let there be difference and even war. I'm standing here, present truth. I'm standing on the Bible. I'm standing on the Sabbath. I'm standing on the promises of God. I shall not be moved. You don't know where I've come from. You don't know where I was when, when, when I laid on the floor of my friend's room in Ireland crying. When I came close to hanging myself, I came close to taking my own life. You don't know where I was. When I hang around with the wrong friends and I'm sat there and the Holy Spirit is saying, come on, man. 
sought yourself out and said, Lord, if you get me out of this mess that I found myself in, I will serve you till I die. Some of us were born with a silver spoon in our mouth and we talk so eloquent. The words flow like rich, like rich, like, like, like gold when it flows out of the mouth. But me, I cut it as it is and I'm done. I stand on Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Let us pray. Father in heaven, I want to thank you, Lord, for the opportunity once again to speak a word from heaven. I ask, Lord, that whosoever hear these words, dear Father, will turn and look and live before it is too late. We are nearing home. We are nearing home. And Lord, I pray, I ask you, Father God, that these words will touch someone's heart. Touch their heart in a mighty way, dear Father. Let them hear Jesus speaking through these words and realize how close we are. We are nearing home. We can see the splendor gleaming from the domes afar. See the glory streaming through the gates ajar. There we soon will enter. Never more to roam. Hear the angels are singing. We are nearing home. We are nearing home. Let's get ourselves ready. Let's get others ready before it is too late. Is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. God bless you.